in high humidity or where there are dramatic changes in temperature, you'll get condensation forming inside your cameras and other electronic equipment, which will then probably rust and go mouldy and stop working. And that kind of damage is not covered by insurance. So to avoid being stranded and bankrupt far from home or even at home, you can use silica gel. Silica gel absorbs up to one third of its own weight in water and other vapors. And kept with your cameras in a sealed bag, it will keep your cameras dry. It can be easily dried out again by heating it and can be reused over and over again for years. It's an absolute necessity in the tropics, but it's recommended for long-term care anywhere. Silica gel is manufactured as granules or beads of various sizes. It's a stable compound, it is non-degradable and non-toxic in pure form. You can buy it in chemists and some camera shops and on the internet. Two forms are most widely available, white or pure non-indicating and blue indicating. Both are equally effective but the blue kind turns pink as it absorbs water so you can see when you need to dry it out. However, cobalt chloride is used for the colour and this is classified in the European Union as a potential carcinogen by inhalation. It is also extremely toxic to aquatic life and there is a risk of contaminating soil and water so it should eventually be disposed of properly. But as I said, you can reuse it for years and the cobalt chloride stays embedded within the silica gel so the toxin doesn't leak out even at very high temperatures. So I would recommend using mostly white silica gel and either mix in just a little of the blue or if you prefer to use only the white, just be sure to dry it out regularly. Since cobalt chloride was classified as a toxin, thankfully new non-toxic colour indicating silica gels have been developed which are available via the internet though less widely available in shops so please do look for those. But here in Goa I've found more blue than white so that's what you'll see here in this film. Also on health and safety the granules produce a very fine dust which you don't want to inhale toxic or not and you also don't want it getting inside your equipment so watch out for that and you might want to wear a mask when you work with silica gel. To use silica gel, small packets like this are handy. Um, you can make these yourself. First get yourself some of these little plastic bags. They're resealable, thick and strong, plastic fantastic. Silica gel absorbs water slowly, so it's okay to work with it like this to get it ready, but you don't want to take too long. When you get to the end, just take the big pieces off the top, leave the small bits and the dust. You can vary the sizes of the sachets according to your needs. When you fill them, make sure they're closed tight and with a pin, make a few holes on one side so the water can be absorbed, mark the top and then keep it upright in your camera bag so the dust doesn't fall out and get into your camera. Now the sachets are ready, they're already absorbing water, so keep them dry inside an airtight container or else put them to use on your cameras. So, to keep your camera dry, put your sachet top side up in an airtight bag, with your camera on top, seal it up and squeeze out as much of the air as you possibly can in your camera bag. Squeeze out all the air, close it properly. That should keep your camera dry for at least a month, depending on the climate. Um, you can tell by the colour if you're using the colour indicating type, or if you're using the pure silica gel, you just be sure to dry it out regularly. And you can get precise information about that on the internet.
if you're keeping a whole lot of equipment inside a cupboard, maybe with other things too that you don't want to get mouldy in the monsoon, like paintings, photographs, then you want to keep the whole cupboard dry. So as well as putting silica gel in individual bags with your equipment, also put some sachets around the inside of the cupboard to keep the whole environment fresh. Just one more thing. Be sure to remove the batteries from all your equipment because batteries corrode and leak very easily in high humidity and that can be a real disaster. Okay, we're going to dry out the old batch of silica gel, which is turning pink because it's almost full of water. We empty these into a pot. Again, doing it outside because of the dust. I've filled the pot to about an inch deep and I'm now going to dry it out on the cooker. Actually this batch is only starting to go pink. It could have taken in more water so I could have left it for longer before drying it. These brown bits are burnt but it's not the silica gel or the colour indicator that burns. What burns are impurities in vapours other than water which are also absorbed by the gel. So it's best to heat it gently. To dry the silica gel we cook it on a low temperature. Put it on the lowest temperature available. Now the heat's driving off the water. You can stir it occasionally to help release the vapours, but again, be careful of the dust. So then you can leave the lid off so the water vapour can escape. There is a bit of a smell off this, which is due to vapours other than water, which get absorbed by the silica gel as well. They're also evaporating. So you want to ventilate the room as much as possible. The cobalt chloride itself doesn't evaporate. It stays embedded within the silica gel, so it's safe in that way. When it's a really strong blue and it looks like it's ready, you can check by putting the lid back on for a while, leaving it another few minutes, see if you get any more steam clouds. When the silica gel is finally dry, switch it off and let it cool down, and then when it's still warm, put it inside an airtight container to keep it dry. Then when it's cooled down, put it back in the sachets and use it again. So I hope this film will be useful to you. At least I hope it reduces your technical problems and leaves you to focus on the more important problems in life. And I wish you happy cameras and happy travels.